Have you ever wanted to get better FPS on Guild Wars 2, but you cannot do it? Even though you have a very good computer, the game just doesn't run as good as well as it should considering how what you have. Well, this video will probably help you. As with this new software that was released a few months back, and of course, our the YouTuber Parrish and streamer Parrish has actually shown it to everyone how it works and they can actually be used to get better fps in Wars 2 well you can actually do it and transform 30 fps into 60 and making the game a bit more consistent in how it actually works subscribe to the channel for more of this go to my kofa if you want to support me and of course go to paris's channel to subscribe and follow him on twitch because he's the one who told me and helped me you know, in the first place so the way that this works is that right now I'm at 60 FPS. About, as you can see, you know, a normal amount of... Uh, it looks fluid, right? I mean, Lion Sarge is not a, the worst place ever, but it looks fluid. And... Um, but sometimes it'll go, it'll drop a little bit, right? It will, it will be inconsistent, especially if I go to like a certain types of content, it will drop down. Like right there, just by moving the camera, it goes to like 54 and stuff like this, right? And if I were to, for example, put in, you know, hey, more uh, quality models, and uh, to the highest, it's gonna start dropping, you know, 54, 53, it's not as good as before, right? But overall, it's going over 30, it's going over, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of close to 60, but it's not consistent. But, this new software, what it does, is that it doubles your FPS. If you have 60, it'll get to 120, if you get 30, you'll get to 60. And the trick that you can do, is you go to frame limiter, put a 30, and now, you can see that it looks kind of eh, not good, right? But, then you go to the Looseless Scaling software. Um, you have to purchase it, by the way. It's like $10, it's very cheap. And you can refund it if you don't like it, of course. And you can scale. And then, when you press it, you have times two. You go into your game, and you'll see that it will look a bit better. It will look kind of like 60, even though it's technically 30. Now, actually... My bad, I need to change this here, one second, in OBS, it's not capturing it right now. But now it is, you can see here that I am playing the game, and it actually looks more or less like 60, right? And, even though it is, as you can see there, on the left side of the screen, it says 42, 52, it, it shows 30 overall, because it's limited right now. So, yeah, some bugs, you can see, like, my character is kind of bugging out a little bit sometimes, um, and, but it overall looks pretty good and this way whenever you're in a very high stress situation where you know world versus world 50 people versus 50 people and you're lagging you can use this software just put it in and you'll actually make it look way more smoother right you can play the game um most of the time like this but i don't know sure if i would recommend it completely it'll depend on you um because i mean you know sometimes it can give you a bit of more input delay um or something like that but honestly if I wasn't a streamer and my OBS didn't make it super annoying to use this at the same time, I think I would use this all the time because, like, the, it's it honestly feels so smooth, even though it's actually not using that many of my resources and it's super consistent. Now, it is important to say that this is a heavily, you know, CPU intensive process, this program, right? It'll use your CPU to generate frames and duplicate them. But. That is okay in Guild Wars 2, because, not because of the fact that this game isn't CPU intensive, because it is, but the thing is it cannot use your whole CPU. If you have a powerful CPU and you're still having issues with this game, you most likely will be able to still use this and get a, um, a more consistent FPS, because the load will not be completely on Guild Wars 2, but also on the software instead. Now, of course, if this game was, you know, a new game, it probably wouldn't be needed, but, uh, you no, know, considering the fact that they are, you know, slowly upgrading the engine and making it so there's better ways of actually utilizing the engine and the game and, you know, it using your hardware, right now, it's a good option to try out if you're having these issues. And also, this can be used on any other game as well, if you are actually struggling with something else. I also have seen, for example, and we're gonna see some footage of this gamer as well, uh, Parrish, the streamer, has been actually using this for his streams as he can no longer uh, stream with a to set up computer and this has been used uh, working out pretty well for him uh, regardless if he has you know a worse computer than what he used to have so definitely a worth thing to try out i was gonna see some of the beautiful footage of him using the um this tool this is at 30 fps and you can see how it looks on stream it looks pretty pretty nice i really really like how it looks it looks very smooth even though 
it's actually uh, only 30 fps it looks like 60 and just definitely the experience that you can actually expect from using this uh this add-on this uh this add-on this uh what's word? this software also uh, before we actually go through all those things i would also recommend to have more or less um a few things on um on the lowest settings just if you're having fps issues before you actually try this for example, Effect LOD, you probably want this in most scenarios when there's a lot of people as it will make it so other you can see other people's um, effects. Having character model limit on lowest or low is also very important so you don't render everyone around you. Now that being said, having um, model quality on <coughs> on World of Wall to see those models and be able to see where they are and everything might be important. Um, shaders probably on high is, uh, I mean, I, 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 if you don't have a, a good GPU, it's probably not going to be a big deal, but you can go in low if you're having issues with that. And shadows definitely on none. I don't see any point in putting those ones. Same as reflections. And of course, uh, the rest of the stuff, it doesn't really matter too much, right? Uh, or anything on that, or anything <coughs> on that is honestly unimportant. Now, one thing that is very definitely important though, putting windowed full screen for this actual feature to work if you don't do this it will not work very well now uh, you can see there on the left side what the fps are uh, you can see that we're actually at 56 fps that's what we're showing right now and this is the uh, original fps that is actually showing for some reason my frames even though it should be at 30 and that's what you're showing here it seems like it's going a bit above that seems a bit weird you can also use this in 60 fps to make it 120 fps if your computer can actually handle that and there's also a specific setting here on frame duration that you can put it up plus three to actually get to something like further you can start up 30 and get to 90 fps well i guess you could go from <laughs> that would be kind of insane you could go from um um from 60 fps to 180 but i would not really recommend it i talked to paris and apparently it gives you a high amount of lag and it's very inconsistent and it just doesn't look that good here are the um settings that you should use overall this is mainly what you want to look at the important part actually no this one is not important these are the important things there are some other options around here but this is probably most likely what you need scaling mode doesn't really matter this is essentially for the scaling like let's say that your game is a bit smaller you can make it a bit bigger you can change the ratio as well if you want to scaling time is very important uh, you can actually change the sharpness it will change how it actually looks but honestly i don't really see any point in doing that in the first place um nvidia the type of scaling um you can see there's a multiple options if you're nvidia pick this one if you're amd pick this one i'm sure that this ones have very specific uh, what's the word very specific uh situations where it's they're better but for now that is essentially the information i have from friend generation you go for the 2.1 because it's the most updated one and you go for the two mode as I said before because three is just too inconsistent you want to get the performance in there as well for less powerful gpu but as less uh, a slightly worse quality uh, if you're actually struggling with that you can turn it on and turn it off to see better for you cursor i mean this is some cursor settings it's not really important at all uh, rendering i actually put a uh, vertical sync because it was actually tearing a lot and it didn't look good so for me I definitely added this one on it makes the input like a bit bigger and also of course you can actually have the draw fps there to uh show the number of capture and scale frames per second on the left side of the screen right uh of course also you have a ga support and a low tearing i'm not sure what you would put reduces latency to low as possible but allows screen tearing and actually i was already having issues with that so definitely not going to be a thing I, I want i'm interested in uh um, also, a behavior multi-display mode is essentially so you can move your mouse over through your, to your second monitor. I have a monitor on my uh, right side, so if I go here, I can move it to the other monitor instantly with no problems. And legacy, you want windowed mode, otherwise it will not work correctly. Now, uh, one little thing that you can actually use as well, because sometimes the mouse becomes a bit weird on this software, and you can install yolo mouse to make it a bit easier for you and not have problems with tearing on the mouse or a disappearing randomly so you can definitely do that and i, th I think i mentioned it beforehand i'm just gonna say it just in case blish uh does not work very well with this uh, i will make it it will prevent you from getting actual good fps you'll not look as good you'll just not work that well so if you if that's a big important thing for you well 
you're gonna have to be using this when you're not using Blish as well. It does work with other add-ons like RDPS and Nexus, but not uh, not so much with Blish HUD because it's just an overlay and it fucks up with this one, right? Uh, that being said, that is mostly it. Uh, we, I will be updating in the comments down below if there's any changes, if there's anything that doesn't work for you guys, just leave in the description. I can ask around because, you know, even though I have a good information about some people that have used this, it's not very popular right now. So the more information we get, the better. So we can actually make it uh, better for you guys as well, right? Uh, so we can have the best experience and best settings for this uh, actual uh, feature. So there you go. Uh, and I guess that's about it. Definitely tell me if it works for you guys. I'm very interested to see. And uh, I'm, I don't know. It's a cool little feature. A cool little thing that you can use. And uh, yeah. Let's see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. See, thank you very much for watching, guys. See you around. Thank you, of course, Persh, for the uh, great information. You probably, you know, did change, uh, hopefully, a lot of people's FPS on their games. So, on their, um, yeah, on their games. So, very, very, th much, much thanks. Uh, there you go. That's the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Go to my Twitch to watch me live. And see you guys around. Love you all. Bye. Bye.